Hi guys, welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live. This is Sharon Oyella, and today we're going to be making a stone pathway. Now this could have been a very quick video, but what happened was th this part of my tree completely changed as I was filming to do the stones here. And I also had started off the video using paper cup trays, and then I later changed my mind and decided to go with these seed starter pots. These are those peat biodegradable pots and these work great. So 50 of these, a package of 50, and these are the 2.4, 2.5, yeah, 2.4 inch pots. 50 of these did the entire walkway, boulders included, all the way up there. So in years past, I used to work with paper cup trays only, and I used to get people to save them for me when they went through drive throughs So I always had a lot on hand, but then I do realize that most everybody doesn't have a stock of paper cup trays on hand. So I think in future videos, I'll just be using these things here because they do work wonderful. You get a lot of material to work with and they're cheap enough. So feel free to play around with different colors. I chose a gray look for my stonework, but you know, not everybody's gonna wanna do the same thing. But I did use four main colors and I did these on different days and I didn't have to worry about color matching because it all just kind of you know, turns out in the end once it's all dry, if you do the same technique that I show you in this video. So the base color is a dark gray, and then the next color on top is a light gray, and then I used a little bit of burnt sienna just to dirty up the stones, and some black to do some shadow work. And for the painting, I'm suggesting a stiffer bristle because it works great for uh, dry brushing on top, and then you're gonna need a thin brush to, to paint in between the stones and slightly underneath the stones as well. You'll also need some cardboard, some aluminum foil, make sure it doesn't say non-stick because you need masking tape to stick to it. We'll also use white glue, hot glue, and some paper towel. And to make the stones, you can use those peat pots like I am in this video, or egg cartons, or paper cup trays. And it's just that we want to have the material that has that texture on the top there, because that makes great stones. So in my last video, I did the tile work in that room, and that tile work was inspired by my trip to Europe, in my visit of the Charles Dickens house. Okay, so I explained all that in my last video. So if you go to my Instagram, the link is in the pinned comment below, you'll see a bunch of buttons here and that is a collection of places that I visited in Europe. And this stone pathway here was actually inspired by my trip to Belgium. My boyfriend uh, surprised me with a Airbnb stay at a what we called a mini castle. Just click on where it says Belgium and then lightly tap the screen until we come to there it is there, lightly tap, and then it says watch reels, click on that. Then you can see the whole video. But there's the stone pathway that inspired this pathway here. I just fell in love with that. When I was walking up the steps, I said to John, I'm going to recreate this in my gnome home. All right, so with my mini castle in mind, I just started bunching up foil and creating a boulder outline. Uh, these are gonna be the boulders going up the stairs, and then I'll put the stairs in the center. So I just hot glued them all in place. And now I'm creating the bottom stair, and again, I'm using foil. I'm just gonna roll it up until I have the height that I want for the bottom stair, just making it fit there. And now it fits, I can do the top, I can roll it down until I have the second stair. Foil is great for this kind of work, and, and it's not gonna be perfect, right? But I don't want perfect, so foil works great. So here's my third stair going in. And I'm going to fill in the space too with some cardboard or foam board there to give it a little bit of height. And once I have everything laid out, then I can just cover it all with masking tape. And then it gets a layer of paper towel that's been dipped in glue. And I've shown this process so many times on this channel. <laughs> it's just white glue you mix with a little bit of water just to make it easier to work with. Then you can lay your paper towel on the surface, pull it out, fold the dry sides together, pull the excess glue off, and then turn it around and make sure you have glue on the other side. I love paper towel for this because you can basically mold it into any space that you need it to go into. I also love working with paper towel because it makes everything I build so much stronger. Like it's just another added layer of strength uh, you'll notice if you work the same way I'm doing, when you're finished and everything is dried and cured, it takes about a week or so, you'll notice how strong everything is. So there, it's all covered in that paper towel and it's dry now, so I'm going to paint it. I'm going to paint everything black. I always do this as well. And this could have been 
completely skipped, but I painted the stairs brown. And I was just thinking about some of the stair or some of the ground showing behind the stairs. But I ended up painting uh, black in between the stairs anyway. So, so I'm going to be using the uh, paper cup tray with all the texture on it for the boulders. And then the paper cup trays that don't have as much texture, I'm using those for the stairs. So I'm going to hot glue these all into place to start with. And you can see I'm just bending them around the stair and fitting them, or just tearing them into pieces and making them kind of fit together like a puzzle. Once you have it all hot glued down, then you want to put a layer of glue on top, a layer of white glue. And I use my finger to do this just to make sure I'm getting it exactly where I want that glue to go. I rub it in onto the entire surface, but you can use a paintbrush. I, I tend to get, you know, quite messy with my hands. So here I'm, go I'm painting in between the stairs with black. So I didn't really need to do that brown there. And I'm just creating some shadow work here using the black as well around the boulders. And there we go. I wasn't sure if I loved this or not. I didn't really like the way the boulders were sitting. So, But I went ahead and, and I glued in some moss around different areas just to see if I would love it more. <laughs> but I didn't. So, I mean, this looks great for a miniature scene. It, it's, it's nice enough, but I decided to change it up. All right, so now I'm going to be using the peat pot. So I'm creating slabs of stone and putting some cardboard in between the folded peat pot here. And I'm just flattening out the front of the stair and creating more of a sharper edge. So I'm using my fingernail there, kind of make it look more like stone. You can also run a bead of glue along the front of the cardboard and then place the folded uh, peat pot over top of that and then flatten it out that way. And that will hold its shape for sure. I did it without the hot glue for a long time and I didn't have any problems because once you get the white glue on there, it holds the shape anyway, but this, this gives you a nice sharp edge as well. And now I'm going to fill in some bare areas with some of the torn pieces off the peat pot. And I'm also going to fill in a little spot right here that I just pointed to with another little piece. And you can do this. It, once you have the white glue on and it's dry, you'll see that it looks just like a stone is supposed to look. And this is where you can play around with some black paint and really shadow out those little areas as well and make it look really cool. So I just hot glued out on the inside so when I closed up the stone you wouldn't see the white showing through. And that will be one stone slab that I've created using cardboard and hot glue. So what I'm going to do with these stones that I'm creating, I am sticking them right on top of the old stairs and having them overhang just a little bit. So this gave me a really cool effect. And I'm just going to hot glue these in place. All right, so this isn't part of a stone tutorial, but I'm just going to throw it in here because this is where I changed up the front of the, the tree itself. And I wanted to show you how I did that. And because I do change my mind a lot, what happens is it adds so much more character to my builds. So I always know when I'm building, it might change, but with that change comes a lot more character. And I'm really happy with how the front of this staircase and everything looks now. So I'm I'm kind of glad that I, I messed up the first design. So I did play around a little bit with the idea of putting some roots over some boulders there, but I ended up taking those boulders right out and going right over top of them. So this is the thing about the bark technique that I show you in my videos. You can take away an add-on at any time. With the colors that I show you in my bark videos, no one will ever know where you've stopped and started. And look at this staircase now. I mean, it's more flowy. I just I just love this little design, how it's going snaking up around corners and stuff. I just love that. All right, so we're going to come back to the painting in a little bit. I just wanted to stop here and show you that the um, new stone work was just hot glued over all the old boulders. And that was really easy to do. I just used hot glue and the, pieced everything together. And I'm going to show you more about the boulders in a minute. And then going up the stairs, um, when I got up a little bit higher, I just decided to throw on a paper towel over top the whole thing and paint it black. And then I just did these stairs here that I'm pointing to the exact same way that I showed you in the in the previous tutorial with the paper cup trays, okay? And then I just kept inching my way upwards and this wasn't in the plan so it's not it wasn't filmed. I just every little bit that I did was on a different day. And yeah, the more I sat down with a cup of coffee and was, was looking at this I, I couldn't turn on the camera because this kind of interferes with my own creativity and I wanted to have a fantastic uh, walkway. So I just kept piecing it together and I'm going to show you here in a second, uh, the bottom of this, underneath these stairs here, all I did was just um, 
build it up with foil tape and paper towel, okay? And then all these stairs that I'm just pointing to were added individually. So I made individual flat stones, just like I showed you a minute ago, and then I just glued those in place. So let's take a look underneath the stones. All right, so I just removed those trees so you can get a better look on the side. But you can see all the, the these three boulders here were glued in individually into the ground itself. And then the hill that I made is just the foil masking tape and paper towel. And then the stones were glued on top. So I made those stones like I showed you just a minute ago. And I just hot glued those in individually, okay? And then in the back here, I made a little stone wall. And I want to show you how I did that as well. So let's take a look. We'll take... Uh, these trees out of the way so you can see what's going on here so there we go it's just a piece of foil that I've rolled up quite a bit um, so it's a little bit thicker hot glued that in place masking tape and then paper towel over the whole thing once the paper towel is dry that thing is one solid piece and then I was able to glue those stones in individually and I'll show you more about those at the end of the video and here at the front of the tree I changed the, the, the uh, design again and I put a little uh, hill in there and then these stones, these ones here, uh, they're just actually uh, torn pieces of the peat pot. So I didn't make stones, I just put the material straight on top. So let's take a look here before I painted them. So you can see, these are individual pieces that I just tore and then just laid them down and I hot glued these into place. I want to show you something else before we get to the painting and the glue, the white glue, because this can get very annoying when you're working with hot glue, you get all those little uh, strings, you know, hot glue strings. And if you take a hair dryer, turn it on for a second so it gets nice and hot, and you just run your hair dryer up over those strings, and the, those most of them will disappear. And that just makes your job a little bit easier. So let's uh, get the hair dryer in there. There's my hair dryer, <laughs> and I've got it running so it, it'll be hot for a second or two. And then I'm going to just blow it over those strings and watch those strings disappear. It melts them and they just like disintegrate into nothing. You might get one or two left behind, but uh, it's a lot easier to remove one or two than a whole bunch of them. It becomes like a spider web, right? And uh, when you're putting the, the white glue on, it gets mixed up in the white glue and, and they get stuck onto the stones forever if you don't get rid of them. So I suggest a, a hairdryer and just blow those suckers away. So let's get back to the stones before I painted them. All right, so once I got all the stairs in place and I was happy with how it looked, then I put on the layer of, of white glue. And I highly recommend doing this because this will keep everything in place, right? So the hot glue is just to hold it for you until you get the permanent glue on in place. So now I'm going to show you how I made some boulders here without any uh, masking tape or paper towel. So I just scrunched up some foil and then I'm hot gluing peat pot tray around it. So this is a custom fitting this little boulder that I've got in my hand into a little spot in my tree there. So I know exactly the shape and everything I wanted, so that's what I'm doing. And I use scissors here to make the fold easier. So I have to fold it down over the foil and hot glue it in place. And this is where I wanna show you how easy it is to patch a piece. Like if you had to fold down too many pieces, it will start looking like it's a folded piece of paper, right? So you wanna patch those. So I'm gonna show you how easy it is here. I just filled in the back patch and I'm gonna put one on the top. And in the end, uh, it just makes it look so much more stone-like if you paint it the way I show you in the next couple of clips here. So after you have the patch glued on, cover the entire surface with the white glue. These boulders right here, uh, because I hot glued them right over top the previous boulders, I had to piece a lot together. So I just patched the top and you can see how awesome it looks once it's painted. So all of these have patches on them. And what I did with those raised ridges and stuff from the patches as I played around with the paint, and I'm gonna show you all that in a second, and it just makes them look so much more realistic. And yeah, I just love the, the patchwork itself. Is It just adds so much more uh, character to the boulders and stones themselves. All right, guys, before we carry on, I'm gonna show you how I painted the stones, okay? and. Like I said earlier, these were all done on different days, so I didn't have to worry about color matching. Uh, the way I do this technique is you can do it in, at any time and add on at any time and you'll never know, just like the bark where you stopped and started. Okay, so the base coat is a dark gray. Okay, so everything got a dark gray. Now I painted these in place. Of course, you can make individual stones, paint them, and then put them in place. It's up to you how you do it. Um, 
after the dark gray was dry, I'm using a stiffer brush here and I'm taking a light gray and I'm going to dab and dry brush over the entire surface. So I don't want to do a solid light gray. I'm just going to be lightly dabbing and dry brushing this on over the dark gray. All right, so you can see what I'm doing there. I'm, I'm dipping my brush in and then getting the majority off. And then I'm just going to dab this on over top. You can also dry brush it on. I'm going to show you that in a second here. So I'm just going to finish up these boulders first. Then we'll go up the staircase. And you can see I'm brushing it on here. So just lightly with that, with that uh, lighter gray, just going over the entire surface, but making sure you're not doing a solid color. So dipping it in, and then you get the majority off your brush. And then you just transfer that color over. A little bit more difficult in this area here for me to, to brush it on. But I got it done. Okay, so the next main color I used was uh, Burnt Sienna. But you can play around with colors, guys. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. You can see I added a little bit of green. Just a tiny bit of green. I ended up not liking that. So I didn't even show that on video. But next I took a Burnt Sienna. And I did uh, just lightly dab that over the surface. Okay, so again, just like the light gray. I'm going to dip my brush in there. I'm going to get the majority of the paint off. I don't want to transfer very much of this color at all. So get the majority off and just dab it here and there wherever you want to dirty up your stone or your boulder. Just here and there, very, very light. Just anywhere I want to have a little bit of dirt. And then I'll do the same thing with the black, but you can see I'm taking the majority off my brush. So there's hardly anything transferring here. Just going to give it some shadows and that gives the rock itself a lot of depth. Okay, now I'm going to take my smaller brush and I'm going to go around those creases now or those raised areas and just line those with the black paint. And because this one was freshly painted, the colors aren't setting uh, on camera very well. So I'm going to go head over to the other rock here that's been sitting for, for a couple of days and just show you how, to, how I work with the uh, shadowing. So I've already done some work on this boulder. You can see that, but just take that black paint. I'm going to line. Look at this. Let's add a bit of shadow there. And if I have too much, I'll just rub it with my finger and spread it around. But that one worked out well, so I'll line this area over here. And anywhere where the boulder is sitting up against a building, you want to put a little bit of black in there as well. It just gives it a, a little bit more depth. Little dips and creases. I'll fill in with some black paint. All right, and of course, before you put the moss in there, you want to paint in between all of the stones. So I go underneath the stone and in between each stone itself. So a, a line of black paint just to enhance the look of the stone, like make them separate from each other. So here is some before I put the moss in. I'm going to paint just underneath there, add a little bit of black shadow, and then in between. Sorry for the shaky camera there. All right, so now we're going to move on to the rock wall. And I'm not going to spend too much time on this because, it, you know, it's the same thing I've showed you with the boulders. I'm going to make individual stones. And I'm going to take one smaller piece and making sure that I have the texture on the outside, of course. And I'm just going to glue a little piece of crumpled up foil in between, in, in the middle, I mean. And then a little bit of hot glue on that foil and I'm going to stick it on the wall and just kind of using my finger to scrunch in the sides. And I'm just gonna keep stacking these stones on top of each other, the way I'm doing here, until I have the piece filled in with, with individual stones. This was a little bit uh, tedious and time consuming, but uh, I think the end result was worth the time that I put into this. And I actually built up the wall even larger after I finished this one wall here. I added another piece to it. And for this uh, wall in particular, I wanted to make sure I got the white glue in all the cracks in between the stones because I didn't use very much hot glue and I didn't want any of the edges sticking up. So you want to make sure you really work that white glue in there. Let it dry and then you can go ahead and paint it and add the moss. And then look at this end result. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm, I'm so in love with this wall. And then, like I said, I added another piece later on and made it a little bit higher. All right, my friends, that will bring us to the end of the video. But before we go, don't don't leave the video yet. I want to give you two pieces of advice. First of all, the moss that I'm using is from my local dollar store. 
and I attach it with white glue. So I put down a, a bead of white glue and then I really shove the moss in there with my finger and make sure it's really pushed in there because I'm gonna need to vacuum this eventually because it will get dusty and I don't want all the moss disappearing. I do have some pieces that I leave a little bit more flowy, but when I do vacuum and some of that disappears, I'll just reattach more moss later on. So I always keep a bag on hand. And the bigger piece of advice that I would give you is about the painting. And I try to include this in all my painting videos now because it's so important. As you're painting, you might not like what you're seeing, and what's happening is is the paints are still wet and they're not they're not dry and you're adding more on top like Remember when I did the dark gray and then I added the light gray on top? The colors change tone once they're dry. And I knew that as I was painting, so I, I could keep going. But if you're not liking what you're seeing, let the colors rest. So just walk away from your, from your project for a couple hours and come back and look at it with fresh eyes and you'll see things are looking a lot different. So early in the video, I was painting this boulder right here and I said uh, the colors weren't showing up so well on video. And that's because the colors were still wet and not dry enough. So, and I brought you down here to this boulder. I have since added some more bark here, so it's kind of disappeared behind uh, my bark. But yeah, just let your colors rest, and then uh, it changes everything. And then you'll probably like what you're seeing a little bit better. And like I said earlier as well, play around with different colors. You don't have to do exactly what I was doing in this video, but do the layering technique and the dry brushing technique and you're going to fall in love with your painting. All right, guys, I think that's about all I can say for this one. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.